Have you found a distributor for Along the Roadside? Uh, the film was distributed in uh, former Yugoslavia and went theatrical. And uh, that was a limited release because we uh, opened the same day as Lincoln, Le Mes, Amour. <laughs> Those films are coming out at the same time as ours. Uh, but I guess it uh, reached uh, expectations of the distributor, which was super long. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, that's that. Um, as far as uh, the rest of the world, we just, uh, you know, we just had a first screening here. We won Best Picture at, uh, at LA uh, International Filmmaker Showcase Film Festival. And um, uh, we're just starting to exploit the idea of distribution. And uh, hopefully the rest of the festivals coming up this year, both in Europe and US, will open up more uh, opportunities or possibilities and we're definitely open to explore. Going back to the first distribution deal overseas, how did that come about? Did you initiate it? Did they contact you? You will laugh at this. I met my distributor, checking him in at the front desk of the hotel that I worked for. Chris, he was there for the American film market, which happens in November each year. So I checked him in. And, you know, I turned the screen and said, look, I'm working on a script. And he's like, hey, I got good luck with that. And then years went by. And then, you know, I was like, M I made that film. And then, you know, then we started hanging out. But we, we developed a relationship and he was willing to see the film. And it's one of those things, you know, as far as distribution, uh, it's that's where it really, like, that's where it hits you when you, real, you understand, and, like, how much of a business. Uh, this whole thing is and that's when you know everything's reduced to its market value and kind of like we had distribution in Serbia because one of the actors in the film is the biggest Serbian actor so of course you can package that and sell it and they put us on uh, great uh, talk shows and we had press coverage and all of that if you had a fraction of that publicity here it'll be fun <laughs> you know but uh, that's that's that so the distributor I guess has to find the angle you know, how and whom can they sell this to. And our film, uh, we had luck that both times it was shown packed to house and people loved it. We had great reviews and there's definitely people who uh, would l enjoy this film. And I think there's a really big number of people globally. But the question is how, will, how do we let them know that this film exists? And even stronger uh, or more difficult question is how do you get them to do something about it? You know, I think Hollywood's great at that. You know, you get in the car, you drive to the theater, you buy a ticket, you see a film, you come out, and you say this is the biggest crap I've ever seen. But Hollywood made you do all these things so you can then come out and say whatever you want. It's really getting people to move them, you know, to, to actually want to go see it, want to buy it, purchase it, and do something about it. I think that's really, whoever handles that game and knows how to do that, that's, they have a handle on things. So it's people moving. Yeah. Almost yeah, yeah. It's how you move the mass. Like we have uh, one of the YouTubers, uh, Danny, has a great following in Serbia. I was with him clubbing there after after uh, while we were there, and so many like it's one of those things. Like people recognize him, people hug him, take pictures with him, and I'm like, dude, telling the movies in theaters. He's like, okay, and then he does, and they're like, really? When? You know? And then you realize. There's, you know, how, what do you do to let people know that your film exists, it's available, and how do you get them excited to see it? It's, that area uh, is something that it's, that's the real game, you know, and I, I so don't want to play it, but you have to. <laughs> right. Yeah. And going back to the distribution deals, what are some of the things that you need to have in place? when you, you know, you said you're entertaining offers and you've already been down this road before. What can you tell others who haven't gone through this yet that mm -hmm. they need to know? Uh, I mean, I, you know, I'm pretty green at it. I, I know that, you know, just communication, you know, and um, I understand their film opened with a bunch of big Hollywood Oscar winners, but you know, your movie goes in theaters and it sounds great, but find out what are the times. You know, like if it plays at 3.30 p.m. on a Monday and that's all you'll get, it doesn't really sound great, you know, as much as 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. on Friday or Saturday. So it's, it's this whole, you know, universe that I never, you know, gave a thought 
and then all of a sudden you're like okay wait so this you know there's people's salaries are here and you know this 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 functions it's like the product has to be distributed i remember uh one of the guys wanted to option my script the one which made into a film but the contract said you know no, I'm not gonna direct. I'm a non-name director. They have their own thing going on. So, brother and I, respectfully, declined that offer. But I remember talking to the person. He kept referring to our project as product, and that kept pissing me off. I was like, "Well, here's the thing. When we make this product, and I don't know, why is he calling it a product? <laughs> you know? Because I always, I keep thinking about shelves in supermarkets. You say a product, and then you think, well, wait a minute, it does end up on shelves." And it's kind of scary, and it's one of those where a guy with a different skill set uh, is good to have nearby who, you know, doesn't have a problem with that word and knows exactly what that means and how to handle it and where to go with it.